Lower than the pits. Lighten up. It was our first game this season. We're just out of practice, that's all. Out of shape, you mean. What we need is some exercise. We need is a training program. I used to have some books and things in the closet. Oh. Anywhere but that closet, OK? Come on, so it's a little cluttered. But if we're going to get in shape, we are going to have to work at it, right? Right. If we have to dig to get what we need, we're going to dig, right? Right. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> Eat, Kaden! Exercise! One, two, three! If you want to find out about exercise, you should go to the experts. For me and my friend Jackie, that meant going to a class where the students take gym as seriously as the instructors do. Every year at West Point, the cadets test the effectiveness of their conditioning on the dreaded obstacle course. Six runners, go! And While Jackie go. treated herself to the joys of running through tires, I worked out on the athletic field. Everyone warned us that the obstacle course is hard until your body is in top condition. The question is, how do you get in top condition? Okay, let me try this. That's what I was finding out from Dr. Gordon Calkins, the head of phys ed for new cadets. I know I'm no Superman, but even the man of steel would have trouble with the barbell Dr. Calkins used to test my strength. Pull, 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 pull. Okay, you can put that there. down. All right, obviously that weight is a little too heavy for you for uh -huh. uh, uh, a one repetition maximum. What is strength anyway? Well, strength uh, can be defined as the maximum amount of force that a muscle can exert in one effort. Mm -hmm. In other words, trying to lift a, the maximum amount of weight you can one time with a curl, one repetition, would be an indication of the amount of strength that that muscle uh, has. Training with dumbbells is one way to strengthen your arms. Dr. Calkins explained how they work on my bicep and tricep muscles. Bicep curls. So what's happening when I lift this up? What happens is the bicep muscle, this muscle here on the front of your arm, uh -huh. contracts or shortens and pulls through a system of levers. Uh -huh. It pulls the lower arm up, overcoming the resistance and the force of gravity. Most muscles are arranged in pairs. This is the biceps. There is a muscle on the rear of the arm, the triceps, that uh -huh. opposes the action of the uh -huh. biceps. Both muscles, and all muscles, as a matter of fact, can only pull. They don't push. The rope. While I was lifting weights, Jackie was lifting herself. She used some of the same muscles I used to lift the dumbbell to pull herself up the rope. The stronger your muscles are, the more force you can exert with them. The cadets at West Point increase their strength with exercise. By repeating an exercise that's hard for them, they can strengthen their muscles until the obstacle course is easier for them. Hey, how am I doing? Hey, not bad, but pull in harder with your arms and lift your knees. Now oh, go. Okay. Everyone works out at West Point, alone or in a group. And though they can't use weights until they're teenagers, even the kids whose parents work here are in training. I asked Dr. Calkins about the differences in exercises. Well, the primary difference between uh, this type of exercise and the, the exercises that we did this morning are that the calisthenics are designed primarily to warm you up. 
uh, stretch and loosen the muscles so that they're ready for more severe exercise. When you do calisthenics, the resistance is your own body weight. Mm -hmm. So you're working with your own body, moving it in order to increase your efficiency. Jackie, you're doing a good job on the lower body obstacles. You've got to work more on the upper body obstacles, work on the arm development, and then you're doing a good job. I'll work on it. You'll get it. 30 seconds of push-ups at your own cadence. Ready? Begin! It's funny, but while I was watching Jackie exercise, I thought about what Dr. Calkins had said and realized that a push-up isn't a push-up at all. The tricep muscles pull your arm straight, lifting your body up. It's the brain that decides what to do and how to do it, but it's the body that does all the work. It doesn't matter what kind of exercise you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're working or playing. Your muscles are what keep you on the move. Go see what else is in the closet. <laughs> Paco, how long have you been in there? About an hour. I was looking for my airplane kit. What's <laughs> this? Uh, this is my old center of gravity demonstration. Come here. I'll show you this. Now, the weight's not distributed properly on this, so it's going to fall over. Watch. See? <laughs> I think it could use a little work. Yeah, well, that's because the center of gravity is too high. Now, if we just twist this down like this, right, make sure this is right. Now, the weight is distributed properly. There. It's going to balance itself off. It's going to stay up every time. Okay. Well, where's the center of gravity? Well, this is the balance point right here. The center of gravity is somewhere below that. So it's going to work every time. See? Uh, do I have a center of gravity? Sure. Uh, Kathy, come here, come here. Hmm. Uh, you remember that thing we did with the airplane? Oh, yeah. Like that? OK. Okay. Correct. Now I want you put to put your, your stomach right there. Now hold, hold on to hands. our hands. Now be careful. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Now you're up. Superman. <laughs> All right. Now it, it's hard for you to stay up like that, isn't it? Uh huh. Okay. Now just let your body go limp. Uh huh. All right. There. Uh -huh. Now you see it's easy for you to balance, right? Yeah. Much easier for you to balance. That's because this is your balance point right here. Now where's yeah. the center of gravity? It's below the balance. Point. Right. Now, why does it? Why is it below the balance point? Because I'm limp. Good. Right. right. That's good. That's good. Do you understand? Yes. Any other questions? Yes. yes. What? Can you put me down now? For total control of your body, you have to keep it in training. Control also takes knowledge. Knowing how your body works. What it can do and what it can't. Okay, Jenna, hold your arms up. The second order to start with the uh, people. Okay. These are the things you learn when you want to be a gymnast. can control her balance and strength, knowing the precise moves to send her where she wants to go, the way she wants to go.
Diane Durham isn't just a good gymnast. She's a great gymnast. Diane learned the right moves from her coach, Bella Caroli. This beautiful sport, beside a lot of satisfaction, a lot of satisfaction of the moving, of difficulties, of risk, you as a gymnast, you got to work with your own body. Between the vaulting board, mm -hmm. and between the horse, or just two yards. In this short time, you have to do a lot of powerful actions in order to transmute a horizontal speed mm -hmm. toward a powerful action and a over rotation of your body. So that needs a lot of strength, a lot of speed, control. mental control. That's your strength. Diane trades almost four hours a day of practice for strength, speed, and agility. She got a lot of body strength and a physical and psychological uh, ability that means uh, self-confidence, uh, self-control. As she works out, awkwardness turns to grace. What seems impossible at first becomes easy. You know what? Hmm. Now that we're labeling things, we might as well make a list of them so you know what you've got in there. Yeah. So call them out to me as you put them in, okay? Okay. Well, I got a box of old comic books. I'm going to put them in the back on the left. Okay, one box collectible comics. Hey. All right, one box 12 rusty doorknobs. <laughs> one <laughs> dozen dirty doorknobs. You guys, come on, get back to work. Okay. <laughs> One Very dusty disc. This is what they call a discus. A discus is something that they compete in the Olympic Games with. In fact, this is one of the oldest throwing events uh, in the Olympic Games. Do you throw it like a frisbee? Because it sort of looks like a frisbee. Is there it's, a it's heavy, way? though. It, you know, because it weighs four and a half pounds, frisbee just floats on the air. Mm -hmm. This, you have to throw it through the air with a great deal of force. throw itself, you build up as much force as possible, you transfer it to the discus at one precise moment, and all of that energy takes over in the flight. But you have to have body mass. See, I weigh 2, 285, 286 right now, okay? You can't be, you know, 104 pounds throwing with a great deal of force. You have to have body mass behind you. I've been throwing this thing for 31 years, right? And I've been trying to throw it further and further each one of those 31 years. And so far, I've had, I've had good luck. I've set a couple it's of It's not records. just luck that made Al Order an Olympic champion. It's skill and training. Let me show you a little bit about throwing here. Now, we're going to throw in that direction, towards those trees down there, right? Mm -hmm. OK, we'll start facing the opposite direction. We're going to face this way. OK, so you face this way. Right. Now, the whole idea with the discus is one of turning. We're going to go through about a revolution and a half, revolution and three quarters, something like that. 
You're right-handed? Yes. Okay, discus in your right hand. You swing it back once. Okay, kind of look in the direction of your throw. You look up towards the throw. Okay. Okay, now it's the first movement is towards the center of the ring, in here. Good. Here's where the throw really takes place, mm -hmm. okay? You started out with a fairly slow turn. You're accelerating, you're moving very quickly now, mm -hmm. okay? You jam the left foot into the ground and you twist and you fire it all at the same time. just one part of it, right? Maybe it's just 25 or 30 percent of it, right? We have to put a lot of time in the gym. We have to get as strong as we possibly can. Uh, we have to pay attention to nutrition, to rest. What is perhaps the newest innovation in this whole thing is uh, computer analysis of the throw. A fellow by the name of Gideon Ariel out in Cota de Caz in California has developed some programs where he can measure exactly what's going on in the execution of the throw. Here, Robin, we see Al Alter going across the circle. Mm -hmm. And you tell me where you think he left the discus. Where the discus left the head? There. Aha. That's what you think. And that's what I see, too. That's uh, what it looks like. Well, let me tell you. I think that your eyes don't see it correctly. But don't feel bad about it. Nobody can see the motion really accurate. Let's look back now. I'm going backward, frame at a time. You thought the discus left there, and still not there. No. Let's go more frame. It's still not there. And let's go even more frame. It's barely there, but still the hand doesn't touch the discus. Right. In fact, this was but the last yeah. frame when the discus still was in touch with the hand. Well, if we cannot see things like this, how can we coach discus? In fact, if you tell me to help Al Alta to throw the discus, and I would think that the discus left where you saw it and where I thought the left the hand, I would have to coach him different than know this information, that already the discus left the hand way, way too early. So with this machine, you can tell everything you need to know about an athlete that you can't see with your plain eye. No, not necessarily. Here, we just can stop frame by frame the sequence so we can tell where the discus left the hand or where his feet is. But we cannot tell what are the velocities, for example. Well, what's velocity? Well, velocity is how fast the discus left the hand. This is extremely important because the faster the discus leaves the hand, the farther it's going to go. Oh, okay. So how do you tell that? Well, here we have to go into a more complicated process we, which called digitizing. We are going to use a magic pen. Mm -hmm. This magic pen, every time you touch it on this screen anywhere, mm -hmm. the information where you touch it going directly to the computer. Each joint we have to trace, and in fact, maybe you're going to trace Al Alta now. Here is the magic okay. pen. And let's push first on the shoe, right here. Okay, right here. Point number one. And point number two will be the ankle joint, here. Okay. And then and, the knee? And the knee, that's correct. And let's push a little bit more to the middle. Oh, right. okay, there. And now we'll go to the hip, around here. Uh -huh. And then the next hip. Uh -huh. And then the next knee. Uh -huh. And then the ankle. And the foot. Oh, it's really a stick figure, like you draw on a piece of paper. Well, it's even more sophisticated than that. You're pushing it here, and the computer is going to draw the stick figure there. In fact, look on Al Alta on the stick figure. He lost a little bit of weight. Huh? Yeah! <laughs> it's just like a real stick figure. Oh, okay, look, I can see his knees and where his feet touch the ground. That's and there's the discus, right? I know this little dot is a discus, but yeah. what's this little dot right here? I didn't yeah. do that. This is a very important data here that the computer calculates for us. And this is the center of gravity. In fact, when we're looking on it now moving, you see the center of gravity going up. Mm -hmm. Then it go a little bit down. Right. And then abruptly going up again. It transfer uh -huh. all the force to the discus just before the release. Mm -hmm. Now we can look on it also in a multiple image. So we'll see very, very clearly what the center of gravity does. In fact, let's look on this dot and follow it. See oh, it? wow. You can see it go up yeah, yeah. and a little bit down that's and then up. That's up. That's exactly what you want in the end to do, but you didn't want him to go so high in the beginning. 
So the center of gravity tells how much motion is, is taking place around it. Around the center of gravity. All the motion occur around the center of gravity. And, and Al Alto has a little mistake here. Mm -hmm. He start low, he's going up, mm -hmm. he's going down again, and he's going up. It would be better for him to continuously go up to about here, up, and then abruptly to go up. That's the release. So it's not enough just to build up your muscles and practice every day. You need to know exactly where your feet are supposed to be, exactly where your arms are supposed to be, and know not to jump too high, and you have to make sure that the center of the gravity is going in the right direction. Right. And this is only few of the things that you have to know. You have to know so many more things in order to be a world champion or a gold medalist in the Olympic Games. Oh, OK. Well, a computer, it's fascinating. It's new, I think, and it's, it's going to be applied to a lot of sports from now on out. I started throwing things in grade school. And when I went into high school, I just started throwing shot put, I started throwing discus, okay? But I've been throwing this now, I guess, for about 31 years, and I still don't have it right. There are so many things with this technique, okay, that still confuse me, okay, that one of these days I'll get it right. Whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double, we're the bloodhound gang. If you've got the crime, we've got the time, we're the bloodhound gang. <laughs> So you don't want anything else before the race? Just this. Ten miles is a long way to run on a glass of water. It's OK. I had a big meal last night. Now I'll have something to eat after this. Well, I'm going. Got to warm up for the race. Don't mean to rush you, but we're going to lock up and go to the race. <sighs> we didn't order a number seven. Number seven? That's my check. Number seven's my lucky number. I'm going to run seven-minute miles today. I can feel it. You're right. This is yours, Mr. Sykes. I wish I were that confident. I'll be lucky to do 10-minute miles. Hey, that guy was right about a seven-minute mile. Long way to go yet. That's Rick's friend Cece, the one who invited her to be in the race. Some invitation. Hey, there's Ricky. Writing schedule, 14 minutes. Let's go. Seventy-one minutes. 
minutes. That guy really did it. Seven minute miles. <laughs> Maybe Vicky got lost. Here she comes. All right, Vicky! Woo. Great going. Yeah, you sure did a lot better than just finish. Who oh, what? Your friend Cece. Oh, super. It was no contest. She must be part jackrabbit. She finished so long ago, she's probably back at her shop dusting off antiques. She works hard. She runs every day. She's really great. And that guy from breakfast was right behind her. I never even saw him. He must have been way ahead of me. After the first couple of miles, I never even saw him. You feeling OK? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. Let's go. Hey, there's Cece. Cece, congratulations. Your help. What happened? Get in. Come on, I'll show you. See that? The sign? I noticed it the moment I got back to the shop. Noticed what? Someone flipped it over. I didn't bother. I knew the whole village would be at the race. Someone's gotten into my shop. What was stolen? A map. Just a map? A treasure map. Treasure? The map to Captain Kidd's buried treasure. We got everything we need from the closet. Yeah, the only problem is now that we found it, we're too tired to use it. Hey, we just need some lunch, that's all. And then while we eat, we can figure out a fitness program. Just let me um, print up a copy of the inventory, OK? Ugh, boy, we sure got a lot in there, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, we're going to be waiting all day for that thing. You're right. Let's go. I'm bushed. Mm. After lunch? Yes, after Come lunch. <laughs> Let's go. 321 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.